Excavation is the process of removing soil or rock from a specific location. This is done by using various tools and equipment such as shovels, picks, excavators and bulldozers to create a foundation for a new structure. Installation of underground utilities such as water and sewage pipes, electrical cables and gas lines and I believe every safety practitioner he or she knows what is excavation but here a tricky question is how many basic and most common important types of excavations there are several different types of excavation including trenching drilling tunneling and dredging I'll discuss each type one by one but remember here you are on the platform of safety first life trenching is the most common type of excavation what is trenching trenching is the process of excavating a narrow deep hole in the ground this is often used to install pipes cables or other underground utilities trenching can be done manually with shovels and other hand tools or it can be done using large machines called trenching equipment such as excavators the second most common type of excavation is drilling drilling is the process of creating a hole in the ground using a drilling rig this can be done for a variety of purposes or reasons including the extraction of oil and natural gas the creation of wells for water or the installation of geothermal heating systems third type of excavation is tunneling tunneling is the process of excavating a passage underground this can be done using large machines called tunnel boring machines tbms or it can be done manually with hand tools tunneling is often used to create tunnels for transportation purposes such as roads or railways the most common and important fourth type of excavation is dredging dredging is the process of excavating material from the bottom of a body of water this is typically done using a large machine called a dredger which sucks up the sediment and deposits it elsewhere dredging is often used to maintain the depth of a waterway or to remove sand and other materials that have accumulated on the bottom of a body of water usually dredging occurs in the open seas in the harbors in the breakwaters after discussing the four most common types of excavation trenching tunneling boring and dredging let us discuss now the important steps those are required prior to start a begin an excavation because as you know excavation is a hazardous activity a high risk activity and alone in united states in 2022 there were 39 fatalities due to unprotected excavations so you can understand the severity of excavation activity a training series is ongoing on excavation safety and this is part 2 let us begin now the important steps of excavation safety prior to start tunneling boring dredging or trenching anywhere on your site as a health and safety practitioner you need to understand the employer or the excavation supervisor is responsible for the excavation activity and must take the necessary steps to identify all the hazards and risks before beginning any 
excavation operation these steps may include number 1 identify the soil types related to the excavation or a trench you are going to dig soil properties often vary widely within a single trench for example the soil type changes from top to bottom and along the length of a trench the most important point prior to start any excavation is to identify the type of soil where you are going to dig or excavate number 2 look for the legislative requirements that apply in your jurisdiction and the type of protective measures to be taken as i told you excavation is always dangerous so in case of any incident any fatal accident you need to bear the consequences of legal action number 3 locate all buried services mostly the services are underground like electricity water lines sewage lines gas lines telecommunication lines and storm water lines you need to contact the owners of any underground utilities services that may be in the location and ask them to identify and mark the location otherwise you can meet with an accident in the case if you are not aware there is an underground electrical line or a water line point number 4 identify and locate overhead power lines electricity is lethal no way to escape but you can follow safe working procedures you can avoid accidents by making a thorough investigation and a complete safety inspection of the area where you are going to dig or excavate point number 5 make sure these services are de-energized as necessary point number 6 know all the contact numbers of these service providers if there is an emergency point number 7 check areas near the site for potential hazards and sources that can impact the stability of the soil be aware that nearby vehicles and equipment can cause the soil to vibrate and then collapse followed by a potential workplace accident point number 8 determine if nearby buildings or structures and their foundations may put pressure on the soil and affect the walls of the trench point number 9 test for hazardous gas vapors and dust before entering in an excavation point number 10 test for oxygen levels in the space before entering and during the work as required point number 11 plan appropriate organization of the work site and good housekeeping practices including moving debris and excavated soil for enough away from the excavation edges point number 12 remove water from the excavation point number 13 protect workers from falling into the excavation point number 14 identify appropriate personal protective equipment including high visibility vest for vehicular traffic and make sure every worker wears them as required point number 15 have a worker above ground when a worker is working in the trench to warn those in the trench of danger and to provide emergency help point number 16 determine if the trench is considered a confined space if so don't allow workers to enter the trench until the requirements of the organization's confined space program are met including entry permits and training number 17 prepare work permits for work in confined spaces as appropriate number 18 have a means of exit provided from the inside of the trench usually no more than 8 meter 25 feet away from any worker in the trench or excavation point number 19 plan for adverse weather conditions for example hot or cold environments storms 
or rains etc number 20 prepare an emergency plan and rescue procedures point number 21 keep first aid equipment and first aider on site point number 22 educate and train workers about all existing and potential hazards and risks and appropriate safety control measures and the last point point number 23 excavation is a high risk activity and you always start with an excavation permit so you must have excavator permit issuer permit receiver and for assurance of safe working procedures there is a certified qualified competent and experienced safety professional if you like to avoid excavation collapse excavation incidents excavation fatalities you need to concentrate on these 23 points you need to make a checklist and as a health and safety practitioner this is your responsibility whenever you are on site you need to check all these points one by one but this all i'm discussing make sure prior to start excavation most of the time on site once there is an excavation activity there is no barricading there is no signboards there is no traffic control arrangements there is no flagman there is no protective system there is no approved excavation supervisor and there is no permit to work system implementation work is going on the people they are engaged they are entering the deep trenches but no one is there to supervise and to make sure that safety requirements are completed permits are obtained and approved and these are the causes that ultimately lead to trench collapse the workers buried underneath and fatal accidents so i'll advise to all the safety practitioners wherever they are if there is an excavation activity they need to train their workers especially the site supervisors and foremen they need to tell them the potential hazards related to excavations and what are the best possible and protective safety control measures that can prevent workplace accidents in the upcoming training session i'll discuss about the excavation protective systems how we can protect excavations from cave in and collapse how we can prevent hitting underground utilities how we can face or how we can avoid hazardous conditions in the excavations but all this in the upcoming training session part 3 of excavation safety for now that's all Thank you.